All right, let's go to solving quadratic equations, the algebra of quadratics. And let me treat this like a video game. Let's start at level zero, which would be very basic, and work our way through so until we can handle any quadratic ever thrown at us. All right, level zero, the very beginning. And let's make this straightforward. For example, here's a quadratic equation, x squared equals 100. Um, it is quadratic, it's something times x squared, 1 times x squared, plus something times x, 0 times x, plus something times 1, 0, mm. equals 100. Well, something squared is 100, of course we know the answer. x could either be 10, and the only trick here is to realize that actually there's two square roots. It could be negative 10 as well. 10 squared is 100, negative 10 squared is also 100. Bingo. That's level 0. I could try to be sneaky and change the name of the variable on you. For example, I could say, let's solve w squared equals 36. No big deal. Something squared is 36. W better be 6 or negative 6. Um, I could be nasty another way and try to trick and say x squared equals 17. Can we solve that? Well, yeah, we can. It's not a nice number, but something squared is 17. So something, but my something, my x better be root 17 or the negative version of root 17. No big deal. Uh, maybe I could do x squared equals 0. 0 is interesting because it's the only number with one square root. x squared is 0 tells me x better be 0. Now, I know I'm speaking fast and going fast, but all the text following this video is worth you looking at and working through slowly with pencil and paper. But here's the rough idea. Level zero quadratics, I think we can handle. We're ready for level one. Level one. How about something like x plus three squared equals 25? All right, now it's looking juicy. Uh, before I do anything, let's step back and see it for what it is. It's saying something squared is 25. Well, by common sense, that something better be 5 or negative 5. And what's my something? It's x plus 3. Something squared is 25. That something better be 5 or negative 5. But I want to solve for x, which means I want to get x all by itself. So let's subtract 3 throughout. Let's take away 3, so x better be 2 or negative 8. Bingo. Not too bad. How about uh, y minus 4 squared equals uh, 49? Well, to be very clear, something squared is 49, so that something better be 7 or negative 7. y minus 4 is 7 or negative 7. Add 4 throughout, y better be 11 or negative 3. Bingo, piece of cake. There is a danger, there is a danger. A lot of students will probably do the following. So I'll do an orange, orange for danger. They'll say y minus 4 squared is, what I say, 49. Great, something squared is 49, so my something better be y minus 4, oops, excuse me, better be plus or minus 7. Then like the shorthand notation, add 4, and I get that y is plus or minus 11. Oops. Notice how I am really, really slow, and I like to write the word or, because when it comes to dangerous things like shortcuts, I don't fall into the trap. The answers are 11 or negative 3. This is actually incorrect. I do see 11, but it's not negative 11. So I'm going to advise, take the time to write the word or, no big deal. But then level two, level one is looking good. As another example, we could do um, x minus 3 squared equals, I don't know, um, 81. And you'd say to ourselves, okay, something squared is 81, so my something better be 9 or negative 9. Taking the time to write the word or, because I'm going to add 3 throughout, and it's now clear that x is 12 or negative 6. Great. Level one, piece of cake. Take your time, practice with the text below this video. Use pencil and paper, do it slowly. Lots of good material there. Let me just erase this part of the board. Okay, let's do one more level one problem before I give a hint of level two. Uh, let's do something like, I know, x plus three squared equals 25. Maybe I've even done this one, feeling familiar. Um, something squared is 25, so my something better be five or negative five. Uh, uh, subtract three throughout, x better be two or negative eight. All right, level two. This is going to look visually much scarier. It's going to be something like x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 25. And there we have a whole new territory of look, scary looking equations. How could I possibly solve that? Well, imagine Lulu came in and said, hang on guys, you've done it. The answer's right there. This guy is actually this problem in disguise. How Lulu saw that, I have no idea. But could we check she's right? Well, yeah, let's do it. Let's look at x plus three squared. What is that if I actually, actually expanded, that, expanded that out? Well, it's a, a square that's x plus three inches by x plus three inches. Uh, let's break that up into x inches and three inches. 
X inches and three inches. That makes much more sense. I'm making nice smudges on my board. Um, pieces I've got. There's an X inches by X inches. That's area of X squared. Three times X has area of three X. X times three is area of three X. And three times three has area of nine. So actually, X plus three squared, if I look at this question, is indeed X squared. So look at the picture. Three X and three X doth six X make. And a piece that's nine, look at that. So actually saying, uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 25 is the same as saying x plus 3 squared equals 25. I've turned this level 2 problem into a level 1 problem, which was straightforward to solve. So what we need to do in the next lesson is learn how to do what Lulu just did. How do we recognize these level 2 questions as level 1 questions in disguise? It's great fun. We'll do it. But work through the material of this section first before you go on to the next video in the next class. Thanks so much.